Hello, in this video, we are going to present our paper Biomedical Vocabulary Alignment at Scale in the Humanist Methodosaurus. This work was performed at the U.S. National Library of Medicine. The motivation of this work comes from the Humanist Project at the Library of Medicine. The Humanist stands for Unified Medical Language System, and it has been integrating over 200 biomedical terminologies by identifying the synonymous terms and assigning them into the same concept unique identifier or QE. For example, headaches from SNOMED City and headaches from MESH are synonymous and therefore assigned to the same QE. The current version of the Humanist Metathesaurus has about 10 million English medical terms and they, they are grouped into uh, nearly 4 million concepts. The current process of identifying synonymy relies on the lexical and semantic processing as well as the human expert review. Therefore, this process can be costly, time-consuming, and error-prone. What we are interested in this work is to investigate if we can find a better way to predict the synonymy. We have two objectives for this work. Our first objective is to develop a simple but scalable supervised learning approach that can outperform the current approach. Our secondary objective is to validate our hypothesis that lexical similarity among negative examples influence the performance of the training model. Our work has four distinct outcomes. The first is to define and address the vocabulary alignment problem at the full scales and diversity of the UMLS. Prior work aligned about two or three terminology. The second outcome is the set of rules that can approximate the current construction process. The third outcome is a supervised learning approach that can largely outperform the current rule-based approach. Last but not least, the, we confirm our hypothesis that the degrees of lexical similarity among the negative samples influence the performance of the training model. Before describing the two rule-based and learning-based approaches, here we briefly define the alignment problem. So the input of the alignment process is a set of source vocabularies or terminologies. The basis of the alignment process is to predict if the two source strings are synonymous or not. For example, are the headache concept from SNOMED CD and cranial pains from MESH synonymous or not? Next, we are going to describe the approaches for addressing this problem. We start with the rule-based approach. Here we briefly describe the essential steps and important concepts from the construction process. Every string is assigned to an item in the metathesaurus or an AUI. And each AUI string is lexically processed into a lexical form or LUI. And each source vocabulary is also assigned one or more semantic group. And if two AUI strings are synonymous, they're going to share the same QE. So these slides summarize the construction process, and the, in the next slide, we are going to approximate this process with a set of rules. Here we describe the four rules that approximate the construction process of the metathesaurus. The first rule is source synonymy. If the two AUI strings sharing the same QE, they are synonymous. For example, headaches from mesh and cranial pains also from mesh, they share from the source QE. Therefore, they're synonymous. The second rule says that if the two AUI strings normalize the same and sharing the same semantic group, they are also synonymous. Here we have headache from SNOMED CD and headaches from mesh. They are also synonymous. 
The third rule is the combination rule that combine the rule from the first and the second. The last rule is the transitive rule. Here, for example, if headache is synonymous with headache through the second rule and headache is synonymous with the cranial pains from the second from the first rule, then the headache and cranial pains are synonymous. So these are the four rules that approximate the construction process. So they will be used for evaluation and compare with the supervised learning approach. We just finished describing the rule-based approach and now we're going to describe the supervised learning approach. We start with the way we generate the data set. Here we use the UMLS 2020 AA version with the vocabularies from the active subset. We limit the language to be English and only use the terms that are not suppressed. For the ground truth, we generate the positive and negative pairs based on whether the pairs are coming from the same or different QE. For example, headaches from Snowmed City and headache from Mesh form a positive pair. We can see that the number of positive pair is quite small, but the number of negative pairs is very large, 8.7 million square. Therefore, we need to sample the negative pairs so that we can form a quite balanced data set. For generating the data set, we follow two principles. The first principle is to use different degrees of lexical similarity among the negative pairs. And the second root, the second principle is to maximize the coverage for the AWIs in the training data set. We compute the jacket for assessing the lexical similarity, and we created four different variants among the negative pairs. The, for the top seam variant, we select the top pairs with the highest lexical similarity between the between the AUIs. And for the RAN seam variant, we randomly select the pairs with some similarity between the two AUIs. For RAN no seam, we randomly select the pairs that have that have no similarity between them at all. Uh, no similar having no similarity between the pair. And for the all variant, we include all of the negative pairs from the previous variant. For the data sets obtained from the positive and negative set, we divided them into learning and generalization set. The purpose of the generalization data set is for assessing the learning transferability of the trained model. And the learning data set and the generalization data sets are mutually exclusive. Here we briefly describe the architecture of our neural network. We adopted the Siamese architecture with two inputs for comparing the similarity. For example, we have two atom strings, lung disease and disorder, and head disease and disorder. They are tokenized and truncated or padded to make 30 tokens. We limit the length to be 30 because 97% of the atoms in the humanus have 30 words or less. So these tokens are fed into the word embeddings. Here we choose the biowork embeddings because it was trained on the mesh terminology and PubMed, PubMed corpus, which are suitable for biomedical domain. On top of the word embeddings, we add a bioSTM layer for capturing the similar, similarity between the two vectors. On top of the model, we use the Manhattan distance for computing the similarity score. On the right-hand side, we show the list of hyperparameters that we use in the training. And the training was performed with Tesla V100 GPU. 
We just finished describing the rule-based and learning-based approaches. Now we are going to describe our experiments for comparing the two approaches. We developed three sets of experiments. The first set of experiments is for comparing the four variants of the rule-based approach, with the four rules being described earlier. Out of these experiments, we would like to choose the best variants for the rule-based approach. The second set of experiments is for comparing the four supervised learning models with the four degrees of lexical similarity among the negative pairs. In the last set of experiments, we compare the four supervised learning models against the best variant of the rule-based approach. This slide shows the results of the comparisons between the four variants of the rule-based approaches. Here, we can see that the, all the baseline variants have high precision and low recall. And among the variants, the transitive rules seem to perform the best. And we are going to compare this variant with the supervised learning approach. This table summarizes the training result for four variants of the learning-based approach. From the top to the bottom, the level of the lexical similarity decreases. However, the performance increases with less loss and higher precision and recall. In this slide, this table summarizes the results from the comparisons of the best variant of the rule-based approach with the four variants of the learning-based approach. Here we can easily see that the learning-based approach, especially the all-learning variant, outperform the best variant of the rule-based approach. For example, it achieved 90% for the F1 when it is only 76% for the best rule-based approach. The second observation is that the degree of lexical similarity among the negative examples influence the performance of the deep learning models. Therefore, our hypothesis got confirmed. We can also see that learning from any of the similarity decree among negative examples is necessary but insufficient. And in order to get the best performance, we need to combine all the three degree of lexical similarity among the negative examples in the same variant. Here we have all learning. Our experiments have confirmed that a relatively simple learning approach can largely outperform the best variant of the Ruby's baseline. This result is even more remarkable that the learning-based approach use only lexical information when the Ruby's approaches use both lexical and contextual information. We also confirm our hypothesis that the degree of lexical similarity among the negative pairs strongly influences the performance of the train model. For the future work, we are planning to add context and more recently developed techniques into our neural network. We will also perform more evaluation at a larger scale and apply these train model to solving different problem in the meta thesaurus, like inserting the new sources or rebuilding the meta thesaurus. This work was performed at the National Library of Medicine and we use BioWolf, the NIH high performance cluster for the experiments. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please drop us emails at uh, vin.wing at nih.gov.